This Pokemon has made its arrival on television 49 years ago, traveling across the country roads of Japan. Now, in the 49 years that this show exists, I have not seen a proper review, um, neither have I seen a review of the show at all. Now, this is really fascinating due to the fact that there's a lot of ways to watch the show nowadays. Heck, for a lot of you in America, you have a legal streaming service. So, for the 99% of you that have not seen the show, um, you have no taste and uh, it's a very much a you problem. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Milan and welcome to the Kamerada Ichigo Review. Subaru Shokan Shikoku no Kundan Subaru Shokan Eidozuku Divine Strike Psycho Jump Nailed it. I am on a quest to watch all Kamarada shows in order. So from the Showa era all the way to Zero One, but I'm already watching Zero One, so. I'm trying to prove that Showa is way better than the Heisei era, and in the Showa vs Heisei movie, so you know that scene with the flower? Yeah, so uh, that didn't exist, and obviously Showa won, obviously. I mean, th there's no debate about that, guys. We know that Showa is the best, and I'm going to prove you why. Now... Um, without further ado, um, let me explain the show. Episode 1, The Mysterious Spider-Man. We get introduced to Tom Holland, and he's the best character, and that's the end of, an, the, uh, that's the end of my TED talk. But, we get introduced to Takeshi Hongo, our main character, and we also get introduced to Tobi Tachibana, who is in no means related to Tachibana-san, okay? There we go. Wait, what? Wait. Wait, no. No, hold on. You know, actually... I'm, I'm actually thinking, right? Is he? Okay, my chest. <laughs> Nailed it. Anyway, um, we see that Hongo is trying to beat his race record because obviously he's a driver. And Tachibana comments on that, saying that he's a really good driver and that he's a biochemistry student at Johoku University. And it just shows you how Hongo is smarter than Einstein. Um, but just like in the episode, we know that he gets abducted by Shocker obviously and we find out that Hongo has been unconscious for a week um, now I haven't seen any pipes flowing around his body to give him food so I have no idea how uh, he, he was able to survive but I'm just gonna give you imagination um, but yeah he's been unconscious for a week we see that electricity is flowing around him like he gets like 30,000 volts of electricity which is a uh, kind of walk uh, I will say that for sure and yeah, we, we just get told about Shocker and what their aim is, you know, converting innocent people into cyborgs, which is really, really interesting. We, you know, get to see how, like, the messed up they are. And I know that in a lot of recent, like, movies, Tyson movies, um, they made up as a joke. But I very much want to say that in this show, they should definitely be taken a bit more seriously because they definitely have... I mean, the goal is not the most, oh my god, this plan is so evil. I mean, every plan is evil, but it, I just definitely want you guys to understand that Shocker is very terrifying compared to, like, Heisei. It, it's a very terrifying organization, and 
you know, it, it's a big deal. Now, Shocker wants to remodel um, Hongo's brain, and we find out that, you know, when his body um, has like 30,000 volts of electricity, he has like a lot of pain. Um, and one of the scientists says, well, once you remodel your brain, you won't feel any of that anymore. And just when they want to do that, uh, the power generator gets uh, damaged. So, um, yeah, shocker. Um, I'll give you a B for effort. Um, I think you need to improve on your security. But otherwise, you're doing pretty well. I'll, I'll give you that. Um, we see that Professor Midorikawa, um, who has been missing for a couple of weeks, um, he saves Hongo. So, Hongo gets himself unchained because he's, he's Hulk powered and they escape now obviously along um, the escape route they get into some traps you know Shocker obviously doesn't want these people to get out and we see that just when everything goes into despair um, Hongo fully transforms and we see you know the first look of the sewer and stuff and I'll comment on that later but yeah he, he saves the day and uh, he, uh, yeah, they, they get out. After that, we get introduced to Ruriko. And she's the daughter of Professor Midorikawa. And she has a best friend called Hiromi. And they get out of uni at this point, I think. And um, Ruriko says that she's being followed. Now, again, this goes very well with the spider episode. She has spider senses. And she can definitely tell that something is going on. Um, yeah, it gets a bit weird. Um, I'll, I'll say that. Um, but yeah, uh, Tachibana comes in with his car and he says to Ruriko that, hey, we found your father, so you should definitely go and get him. And we see that Ruriko leaves with the car and Shoka um, attacks Tachibana and Hiromi, but we find out that Ruriko and Hiromi changed their clothes whilst they were in the car. Tachibana had a good time. <laughs> Tachibana had a good time, boys. <laughs> yeah, boy. Um, but yeah, uh, Ruriko gets into the place, and before she like makes a, you know, herself present in there, we see that Hongo and uh, Professor Midorikawa have this very interesting talk. So at the start, we see that Hongo is basically telling Professor Midorikawa that he needs to encourage himself to tell all of these evil plans about Shocker because, I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, but yeah, Midorikawa has this guilt because he's the one that I recommended Hongo to Shocker. Um, and then we see Hongo have guilt because he tries to turn on some tap or whatever um, and he breaks it, uh, just like Pat and Mark. Good show. Uh, but yeah, um... He uh he breaks it and he's like, wow, I'm definitely a cyborg, um and he he starts begging Midorikawa saying like, hey, um, can I get my body back please? Like I I really need my body back. Like I I am, if I take my clothes off, will I look like a cyborg? I I got a date, okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is the point where I do want to talk about how we don't understand how. Hongo or the next character that, that we will mention um, feel we don't know how they feel because we are not from Detroit and we don't know what it feels like to be in this robotic body and so you know we do feel this pity because we don't understand so how are we supposed to like comprehend with this information and you know the way that you feel so definitely let me know what do you think of this? Because obviously I can say as much as, oh, I just feel sorry for him. But definitely give me any analogies that you think of this situation. Because it's definitely an interesting situation that could definitely happen in the future. Because possibilities. Now, it kind of sounds like an argument when Hongo is begging Midorikawa to give him his body back. And Ruriko kind of overhears that conversation. Now, you know why Ruriko said that she's being followed um it's actually shocker um basically they wanted to find out where her father is by going to her which makes sense i mean she would find out where her father is eventually so makes sense but um they find out a bit quicker and uh, they kill off her father now this is where i will talk about how 
it's really interesting how they kill off people in the show, especially the way they kill him off. I think it's bubbles. Um, the form that, that they that they do his death. Um, but there's a lot of ways, really disturbing ways that they kill off uh, monsters and people uh, in the first few episodes. Uh, I will mention some of the notable episodes later, but I definitely want to talk about how we are very much used to explosions, um, in and 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 people perishing with a snap. Um, we just know that we don't know any other ways of people dying, and so it's really interesting how. A lot of these monsters die in a very different way. Um, I definitely like it a lot more when they die like that. But I feel like, you know, because of recent days, I don't think people uh, would want to see that, I guess. I don't know. Um, but I definitely do want to say that I very much like the way that they kill off monsters and people, actually, um, in the show. Now, Ruriko joins the situation and she sees a dead father. And she's like, you killed him, bitch. And, um, yeah, I mean, Hongo's like, okay, well, um, I'm not human, and I just got threatened that I killed a father. Whoa, 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 okay, um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be woke, but, um, yeah, for the rest of the episode, um, Hongo manages to fight off, uh, Spider-Man, and he beats Tom Holland, which is why, um, you know, Sony had this whole discussion thing about Tom Holland being in the next movie um, but yeah he beats him and you know he has this guilt obviously because why wouldn't you that's the end of the episode really good episode um, I'm gonna talk about next episode because it links next to it so episode 2 the terrifying Batman see how we're going from Marvel to DC I think it's kind of cool it's kind of cool I'll definitely say that <laughs> um, but in episode 2 um, there is a bat cyborg and it has like um, some sort of virus and basically it's trying to give the virus to people especially in this apartment block that we're focusing on in this episode and one of the people that gets infected um tries to attack hongo whilst he's doing some racing so at least we know that our main character doesn't stop doing his normal stuff after you know he turns into a cam rider okay um but yeah, he's like, whoa, okay, something's going on. So they try to investigate that situation. Um, I think Hongo manages to fight the bat cyborg at night. But, um, you know, that's Batman's true power, uh, fighting at night. So um, he doesn't kill him off. And, um, yeah, um, then Ruriko, she basically um, obviously still suspects Hongo of uh, killing a father. And her and Hiromi... They basically, um, you know, try and find information. Now, here's something that I do want to mention that Tobey and Hongo have been working together for a bit. So, I'm kind of unsure of how Ruriko and Hiromi don't know about Hongo's existence. It's I'll give you Tokyuja for imagination next time, but... That's that. To be trying to hide the fact that you know, Hongo is with him, and uh, yeah, they try to investigate the apartment block, and Rico uh, obviously tries to find out more about the situation. She finds out that Hongo is actually a good person, and that Shaka is basically a bad, bad you know whatever, um, and she forgives him. But Hongo obviously still has his guilt because he's not human anymore. He he's a different man, as he says I think in the episode. And yeah, that's how the episode ends. Um, definitely want to talk about the narrator. Best performance that I've ever seen in my life. He always starts the episode saying that uh, this comrader this is the comrader and uh, he fights these monsters, making sure that Shocker is destroyed. And at the end of the episode, he says that uh, Hongo is very depressed. So, yeah, so at least we know that <laughs> every single episode, Jesus Christ. Um, hi gamers, um, so I had to borrow my <laughs> brother's bike because, um, anyway, that's not even the point. Um, clearly I make, you know, um, st stuff wrong in the recording. Um, so, um, also, um, my talking is kind of dead, um, in the, f in the first few minutes. So, uh, 
Yeah, I, I hope the skits make up for it, but that's not the point. Um, so you know how in episode one I said um, that Hongo goes to Johaku University. Well, the actor for Tachibana San actually makes a um, he he makes a mistake, and the university is actually called Jonan. And when I said that Ruriko and Hiromi go and investigate the apartment block, so before that we see that Hongo is in Jonan University um, with his friend colleague doing some investigation about the bat virus and he's asking his colleague about how um you know how long is is it going to take is there going to be a cure and his colleague says that this a totally new virus that we've never heard about and that it takes a long time to uh, you know find a vaccine i mean he, he's not wrong um but that's my ted talk Now, until episode 14, we don't really learn much, I'll be honest. This is kind of where I will talk about how the story can get episodic. It's, um, you know, it's a, it's a weekly show. It's months over the week, making sure that Shocker gets beaten eventually. And it's understandable. I understand that very much, and I actually like that. It, it makes it feel it is an old show, so it makes it make it look old-fashioned. Again, I like that, okay? Um... So, we definitely learn the fact that Toby is kind of like a mentor. He definitely wants to test Hongo in his abilities. And Ruriko gets a bit annoying. Um, she basically lands herself into a lot of trouble. But I'll move that into the character section. And then we also get introduced to Shiro. He and Hiromi and Ruriko, they work at this place called Snakamigo. Um, it's kind of like a main base for the first 14 episodes um, until we get introduced to um, the Tachibana Racing Club but yeah I mean um, it, it's a it's a cool place actually fun fact um, Snack Amigo was um, in um, the Tyson movie um, the Let's Go Ichigo um, the Oz one and yeah it's like where Oz would have his bar it said Snack Amigo so Easter egg um so that's that for the first 14 episodes again it's just episodic uh, monster of the week um but you know if there are any notable episodes you know if i will say that there's this thing is now episodic i will mention some notable episodes so here they are now in episode three um there's like this scene where escapees are trying to escape like this desert place right and it's actually a test it's for a cyborg to test their abilities and again it's it's showing how really terrifying shocker is and how creepy the deaths are like the way they kill him off is just like liquids like going into the sand um really scary really creepy i definitely liked it um and yeah in episode five um there is a scene where Hongo gets trapped in a confined space and the cyborg is like haha so you're trapped in there you can't transform get wrecked um and then he um the, the monster like lays a bomb and basically what happens is in the first few episodes Hongo can't transform until enough pressure is applied for the turbine in his belt to rotate right now for some reason you know, normal people would think that the bomb would kill Hongo, but instead what it does is the pressure from the bomb turns the turbine, spins it, turns it to Ichigo, flies up. Makes 100% sense. I mean, Hongo will make a uh, 6,000 word essay talking about how that makes sense, but now I will mention episode 6 and 7, because if I don't, then uh, a lot of people will question me. Um... Six and seven are the meme episodes. Basically, um, Hitler, yeah, that word, um, he has laid some treasure for, to leave in Japan. Um, and basically, that treasure is worth making another empire. Um, so that's cool. And uh, yeah, basically, there's a captain. And at the time of that recording, it was 26 years ago. And from my notes, that would make it 95 years since that treasure 
was like laid in Japan or whatever. So it's pretty woke. It's pretty woke. But um, yeah. So basically, what happens is shocker question uh, the captain about you know the treasure and um, yeah, he he's like, no, I'm not telling you. And then like, okay, well, um, I have this thing called a trap card. It's basically I'm gonna take your daughter, but I'll give you an extra discount if you tell me right now. I'll you know I'll give you her right straight away. Uh, so obviously it didn't happen. Um, but yeah, basically, um, it's kind of like a race. Um, imagine Shocker here, and imagine like Hongo here. Basically, Shocker managed to get somewhere, and then Hongo managed to get somewhere with finding the treasure, and it's a two-parter. So in the second episode, um, they. Um, you know, when Shocker thinks that they found the treasure, they're like, we found the treasure. What's inside of it? And they open the thing and it's Hongo. They're like, uh, Nazi's hidden treasure is Kamen Rider. Um... And yeah, Hongo beats them, he beats the monster, um, and that's the end of the episode. And before anyone asks, what is in the treasure? Now, I forgot to mention that, uh, about the suit, right? So, let's talk about the suit and the transformation. I also do want to mention, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm so stupid, but um, I do want to mention that the... Hongo, the, his actor, Hiroshi Fujioka, does the bike stunts. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, he, he does the acting for, you know, the Insu, which is really cool. And um, I'm very sure that he won't get into an accident, which I will definitely not talk about after the suit and the transformation. But in terms of the suit, very much like it. It's um, very practical. It, you know, uh, people will comment on how the suit is very bland. But my argument is that... It makes sense because if you think about it, he's supposed to be a cyborg. He's not supposed to be flashy. He's supposed to be a killing machine. So making him look bland and kind of camouflagey makes sense. And I actually really think that it's good in terms of his suit. Um, in terms of his transformation, he's really good as well. We see that he uses his bike, which another stupid question, but you know how his bike is not related to Shocker's plans, so. How does he know that his bike is able to turn him into a cyborg? Anyway, the transformation is very simple. He goes on his bike. He travels uh, fast as boy. Fast as fuck boy. And uh, yeah, he turns into Ichigo. Again, really cool. It, it fits into the theme um, of him uh, being a motorcyclist. And uh, yeah, really like it. Really good. Now, before episode 10... I think um, it starts coming off on episode 10. Um, Hiroshi Fujioka, who I just mentioned before, um, is able to do some bike stunts. Yeah, well, um, he kind of messed up. Um, he basically got into an accident and he shattered his whole leg. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that wasn't good. Um, so he wasn't obviously able to present himself as Ichigo, neither as Hongo. So... In episodes 10 and f between 10 and 13, we see that his character, like stuff, is stock footage. There's this one funny scene in episode 12. Um, Rudiko says something like, Oh, let's ride together, Hongo. And you see some random footage of uh, him, like, doing some racing. It's so stupid. Because you see a, like, normal, like, recorded face, and then it's next to like some recorded footage but it's like the the coloring of it is very different from um ones of Rudiko so it, it, it clearly looks like something stupid is going on <laughs> but um that's that um and yeah it's just stock footage um i don't know who did the stunts for um for those episodes but yeah <laughs> um also in episode 11 um a newlywed couple uh, get killed off um what the f but most importantly we get introduced to the tacky crisps now 
I don't have any particular flavor that I like, I'll be honest. Um, I had them once in Spain, right? Um, and it's, uh, kind of, I don't know, the aftertaste wasn't really good. Um, but moving on, let's talk about the actual character, Taki. Um, he's an FBI agent and he's very similar to the Cougar like, police department. However, I haven't watched Cougar, so don't come at me. Um, so without getting any more hate, I'm just going to move on. Episode 14. Raid of the Demon Sabotigron. I think that's how you say it. Now, at the start of this episode, we get introduced to three characters. Um, who are Hiromi's friends. You know Hiromi? Um, and... Yeah, um, basically what happens is she brings them. Uh, they're called Mari, Yuri and Michi. And as well as the um, Yuri's little brother called Goro joins in. And Tachibana's like, okay, so um, what do you know about bikes? Um, and so Michi's like, I know about 90cc bikes. No idea what you, what you said. I looked it up and it says, it's, it looks like... So I'm just gonna say that she knows something about even before it was made. Um, in terms of Yuri and Mari, uh, Mari knows some fencing. Okay. Um, you Yuri knows some first karate, first dan karate, whatever. Um, and Toby is just like, okay. And yeah, um, Mari is like, please teach us, like, just do it, please. Um, and that's that. Now, we see that a commander um, gets, uh, like, he, he relocates in Japan from Mexico. And uh, Taki basically has a colleague that is going to come in and they're going to investigate the situation. Um, we find out that actually that colleague was killed off by the commander and that the commander is actually the colleague. So, yeah, that was a bit unfortunate for Zaki. He nearly got killed off, but then he got saved by Hongo. Now, um, we see that um, everyone at the racing club thinks that there's going to be an intruder and, you know, they're going to get attacked. Well, actually, it's Hayato Ichimonji. Oh, you don't know who he is? Okay, um... He says that he's a freelance photographer and um, he is very much related um, to Takasa. Can I even put it on? There you go. He's related to Takasa. It's going to be a stupid edit. But um, yeah, yeah, he's a freelance photographer. There's a funny scene. Mari's like, um, can you do a photo shoot of me? And he's like, I don't do women. Okay. Oi! Um, stupid. Um, Tobe and Taki, they investigate some uh, kind of like um, base that they found. And Hayato is with them. And they're both like, what are you doing? We don't know who you are. Like, what are you doing here? And Hayato basically reveals that he is a uh, rider, Nigo. Um, and he says that Hongo and Ruriko, they escaped to uh, Europe, and, man, I mean, the, it's a two-parter, so, um, they managed to, like, fight it off, um, in the first episode, and then in the second episode, um, Haito is, um, able to, um, save everyone from these cactus bombs. I'm sure we're, like, in his apartment or something, and... The window is clearly not open. It, it, I, I, from my perspective, so I don't know how they survived that. But we do get an interesting sight onto Hayato because we find out that uh, first of all, Hongo saved him, so that's interesting. And we also see that um, he had a bad dream where he was dreaming about how he got converted into a cyborg. Again, we don't know how that feels like. It's really scary, probably. So. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. And yeah, the rest of the episode is just Hayato beating the monster. So, now that we got introduced to uh, um, 
Hayato, let's talk about his suit. I definitely like the way that he looks. Um, he's got some more colour in him, so it makes him look a bit more different, obviously, from Hongo. And I like his uh, transformation sequence. I do find it a bit stupid, especially in the later episodes. So, he... Um, he, he wears different clothes, obviously. Now, when he transforms, you see him in this one, like, um, outfit when he, like, jumps. So, does he wear, like, does he wear, like, double clothes or something? Like, tell me. But other than that, I like his transformation sequence. He's able to not need to, no, uh, like, he doesn't need any, like, pressure. He, he just jumps and uh, transforms, which is really good because it means that makes him less vulnerable to being attacked by you know a shocker and being killed off so now after episode 14 um do you guys remember shiro yeah i didn't explain much about him because he basically disappears after episode 14 um he gets into the shadow realm so every support character that's gonna leave um randomly um is gonna be cast into the shadow realm okay so now you know that's shiro episode 14 and yeah again this bit of um this bit of the story is again episodic again until episode 26 um and yeah i mean there's nothing much to explain multiple episodes in episode 18 they're doing camping what your racing club what what's camping gonna do i also do want to mention that hayato uh does get um the initial explosion finishes um again i do prefer the like creepy measures of killing away monsters and people but i don't mind the explosions they're cool they're kind of funny as well so oh wow okay episode 25 okay well um in episode 25 you know michi the only person that knows about motorcycles yeah she gets cast off so um episode 26 the terrifying ant lion yeah toei doesn't know how to name their tiles they just say terrifying for everything i mean they are terrifying but whatever so quick fact about ant lions for those of you that don't know um ant lions um are like ants ant like species or whatever and um basically they make traps by um letting their um uh, like enemies or whatever fall into the ground which makes sense in the episode so let me explain the episode uh this is what i would call our first arc so we had an arc with you know the introduction of Hongo, and then we had the arc of introduction to Hayato. But now we get an introduction to our big bad guys, technically. So, and you know, why they're more powerful. So, we get introduced to Colonel Zol, or Oberto, you can call him wherever you want. But he basically has the capability of transforming into another person as long as he knows what they sound like and knows what they look like. Okay. In the episode, the antlion cyborg is basically creating um, all these traps into the road to create traffic chaos. Um, and we hear that Taki has received some information from the FBI department that Kornazol is heading from the Middle East all the way to Japan. Um, so yeah, he's heading there and he's going to be our big boy. And... Yeah, Taki, Hayato, and Yuri investigate the situation. Um, they ask some waiter um, about, you know, if they know anything. And they say no. Turns out he's actually a shocker. And, um, yeah, he, he brings some information about Taki. And Kolnazol turns himself into Taki. Cool. Now, what Kolnazol does is make look... Is he makes Taki look like a bad person. Um, he basically drives into places that you're not supposed to go into, and he also beats up some police officers. Um, 10 out of 10. Now, Taki gets arrested, and, um, you know, you think that if you get arrested for something that's not your fault, you just want to, like, be like, hey, I, I didn't do that. But Taki is, like, um, really calm about it. He's like, okay, fair enough. I'll come in. I, I can prove you that... I'm not a bad person. I'm actually the CEO. But, um, yeah, so that happens, which is really cool. And, um, you know, he says to Hayato, like, hey, just get me out. And Hayato's like, you just proved yourself that you're not guilty by getting yourself into there, so. 
Um, now Zol basically. Now Zol basically um, pretends to be Taki again, and he um, goes into Hayato's house or something um, to try and investigate more about this matter. And Hayato knows that something is up because basically he let the real Taki escape. And Taki's like, Damn! and um, yeah, that's uh, that's that episode. I mean, uh, we get introduced to Zol and we beat the ant lion. No, no, that's really it. So, you'd think that I would explain more episodes because uh, we get introduced to our first, um, you know, commander. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's Again, it's episodic and uh, not about episodes. Um, in episode 7, 27, you stupid little sh A cyborg is manipulating children into becoming, you know, part of Shocker. Yikes. So yikes from me. In episode 28, um, Hayato is basically going to participate in a race. But he's a freelance photographer. The f Oh yeah, remember Hiromi? Oh, I don't remember her either because she gets cast into the Shadow Realm. Episode 34. I will say that she's really pretty. And that's all of my simping for this episode. Episode 39. Monster Wolfman's Murder Party. In this episode, we see two drunk, f <clears throat> we see two drunk lads uh, basically having their time of their life, I guess, during Christmas. One of them is actually a test subject that has the wolf virus, um, and the other one gets attacked by the by the test subject, which is you know unfortunate. Also, for some reason, this random girl who's in an orphanage, she's just there at night. Why? What? We see that um, this is like just enjoying Christmas. So this is the only. Christmas episode ish of Ichigo and well I should call it Nigo but we see that Hayato basically goes into the orphanage uh, setting up like the tree and stuff and the girl that was there at night so her shoe um, gets like falls over and Shoka is like hmm someone was here yeah that's not a good thing because we, we have to keep our um, project wolf be kept hidden I guess whatever but she she says to Hayato she's like I have this doll they took my doll can you please give it to me <laughs> can you please give my doll and Hayato's like all right all right I'll do it I guess now the wolf cyborg basically tries to kidnap the girl right but obviously we're not that stupid um Goro basically dresses as the girl um, which doesn't happen once, it does happen again. Um, but yeah, he, um, he pretends to be the girl, and, um, Hayato basically tries to fight it off, but doesn't, and again, it's night time. It's, they did it with Batman, now they did it with Wolfman, what, what, what else do you expect? <laughs> now, um, they, um, they find some sort of commander thing, and, um, they fight it out, and they find some briefcase, and it says that there's an invitation. Okay. Now, in the invitation, it says that um, you're invited to the Monster Wolfman's murder party, uh, which is pretty cool. And um, Taki and Hayato are just um, doing this and um, saying that they should definitely attend it. Why would you question it? Like, you're, like, you're trying to save the world. You're obviously gonna get there. Now, Taki goes in there, but we don't know who it is actually because. They're all wearing KKK outfits. Like, I'm, I'm trying to joke, but, like, they're, they're wearing KKK outfits, okay? They're wearing the capes, they're wearing the outfit, okay? And uh, they're, they're at a command base. And um, what makes it even worse is that, like, half of the people that unmask themselves, because Colonel all tells them to unmask themselves, um, like, half of them are, like, white people. Just makes it worse, okay? So, like, it's a bit of a yikes from me, dog. It's a bit of a yikes from me. But, um, Connor's always like, um, oh, I found you, Hayato. Unmask him now. It's Taki. Surprise. And, um, yeah, uh, we get the reveal that, um, the Wolfman is actually Connor's all. And, um, that he's gonna kill you. Um, but he dies. Um, and that's the end of the first arc.
I can't clap, but that. Well done. You got yourself through the first arc with me. Um, yeah, we're not done. <laughs> Episode 40. Death March. Two riders. Episode 40. Death March. Monster Snowman versus two riders. Yes, I said two. I don't mean Nigo. I said two riders. Like, there's one, two riders. And, um, yeah, we see that Hongo is uh, in Switzerland um, with Mika and Emmy, who are basically our new companions. Um, yeah, uh, Mika knows some, like, card stuff. Like, she's, um, you know those television, um, like, card readers? I don't know what you call them, but... Um, so that, those people, that actually won't, let's actually check one here, I'll just put a clip here. Uh, my name is Yolanda, I will tell you your questions, you can only put one and I will answer you only three. Hey again, um, so um, I took off the belt because this is more serious, so Yolanda that I just betrayed, she unfortunately died of pneumonia at the beginning of this year, as I was doing some research and getting some nostalgia about Czechia, but Anyway, I, you know, I just wanted to make sure that my facts are correct and didn't want to, you know, disrespect Yolanda. Um, and I hope that her wise words, even though they were interpreted as memes, um, I hope that her wise words actually guided some people. Because what she said, I could actually, you know, take it and be like, okay, I, I actually agree with what you're saying. You, you're quite right. And I think that it's something that we should think about. Um, but yeah, uh, condolences to her family. Uh, may she rest in peace. And... Uh, yeah, let's move on now to a bit more cheddier place. Hello there. Um, yeah, my mouth was pretty dry. So, so that was cool. Um, I have sparkling water. I, I can't show it because it's got a logo on it, but I got sparkling water. I think sparkling water is really good. I drink it a lot. Um, and it's not the reason why my mouth is dry because... That's stupid. Um, and yeah, let's continue. So, in the episode, we start off in Switzerland. And we get introduced to two sport characters called Emmy and Mika. And they're the acquaintances of Hongo. Um, yeah, that character. The, the, the narrator even makes a joke about it. He says something along the lines of, Do you guys remember this character that disappeared for like a quarter of the show? He's supposed to be here for the whole time, but he just he just fucked off, I guess. Um, yeah, so he comes back, I guess. Um, he wears a Sakurajima 1 suit. Um, I'll talk about it now, because why not? Um, Sakurajima 1 is arguably my favourite suit. Um, I did say that I like how his first suit, his original suit, really... Um, you know, fitted into the whole scheme of like how he's supposed to be a cyborg and he's supposed to be bland. But it's just a choice of green, I guess. I just like the aesthetic of Sakurajima 1. Um, if I ever got like an SH figure art, um, I personally don't have any figure art um, personally. But, you know, if I could have one, then I would probably take that over any other suit that... Uh, there's no way they release an original uh, Ichigo figure art, so that would be interesting to see. But... Um, off topic, um, yeah, I like the suit, um, the henshin is, um, well, we don't, I'm not going to talk about the henshin because the henshin actually doesn't come until, um, the movie, which we will talk about, but, yeah, so, I like the suit. Now, basically what happens is that, um, some cyborg, the monster, snowman one, he basically goes to Japan and Emi, Mika and Hongo find out that the monster wants to do something with the volcanic belt in Kyushu, which is an area, like a mountainous area in Japan. And yeah, so Hongo's like, okay, I guess it's time to go to Japan. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Hongo didn't really have to because Hayato could just go there, but hey, more screen time. Now, we see that Emi and Mika are in Japan, and for some reason, they have their Switzerland clothes. I, okay. Um, the point is that we see Tobe, Yuri, uh, Goro, and yeah, that's it. They go into um, a ship, 
on a cruise ship to basically fuck off to Kyushu and everybody's questioning like where is Hayato and Taki they're basically undercover I mean it does make sense seeing that Shocker is on the ball so they don't want to just compromise themselves to them because then that'll just cause trouble I mean I don't think anyone would want a Titanic 2 at this point so yeah now we see that Emmy has this sort of um, data um, you know some sort of information about these volcanic belt plans right and Yuri says okay just give it to me since um, you know you're an agent of Hongo I'm an agent of Hayato you know and um, they give it to her and uh, Snowman sees it and he's like we're getting her we're getting Yuri like we, you see that robe we're getting that robe um, now for some reason Emmy and uh, Yuri change their clothes when they get into the hotel um, Okay, um, I guess it makes sense in terms of the episode because basically what happens is instead of the monster kidnapping um, Yuri, uh, it kidnaps um, Emmy. So, I mean, that's cool. Um, and for the rest of the, you know, this is a two-part episode. Um, in the first episode, we see that Emmy basically gets kidnapped and Hayato and Hongo save her. And that's the end of the first episode. We also do get introduced to our new commander. Now, I didn't talk about Colonel Zoll uh, much. Um, my apologies. Um, I'm going to talk about my um, thoughts on his character like at the end. But uh, in terms of his design, um, he definitely looks like a Nazi Germany general. Again, I said that Shocker is based off of like evil organizations, Nazi regime being one of them. I mentioned KKK. If this video gets demonetized, I don't care. I'm spitting facts. So, yeah, he definitely just like he definitely looks like he has that you know kind of um, outfit, especially with the cap and stuff. And fair notice that each of the commanders they have a whip and they use that like they use it on like other people on like other cyborgs like they're crazy like they're crazy. It clearly shows how the t they're you know pretending that the slaves and such it, it's wild it's really wild and we get introduced to our new commander who is called dr death or shinigami hakase uh, i'm just gonna stick to dr death because i don't want to sound like i'm mispronouncing everything but uh, he definitely does have like this vampire look especially with his cape um uh, which is cool i will definitely say that he definitely does look more mature because of like he has like grayish hair so he definitely looks like kind of more experienced than colonel which to a fair argument i would say that he is but that's just more on the character bit so i'm not going to talk about that but yeah that's really it on him and in the second episode we see that there is a bus and basically they're collecting all these people from the hotel but Goro and this random kid are just not allowed into the bus like okay I guess the, I guess they just can't fit in now it turns out that the bus was obviously you know shocker um you know it was by shocker and you know they're taking they're taking these people now all of these people that have been kidnapped they're going to be used as slaves um to cause more chaos on the volcanic belts of kyushu now hongo and hayato they meet the two boys and they're like what's going on and they basically tell them that you know their parents have been basically kidnapped by the boss and such and hayato and hongo basically say how do we deal with this situation oh i know we're just gonna flip a coin i don't have a coin on me but hold up hold up Hongo and Hayato basically talk about how, you know, they should deal with the situation in a very serious manner. You know, how do we deal with the situation? Oh, I know. Wait, we're just going to throw some coin, bro. We're just going to flip a coin and decide what we're going to do. Um, and obviously, Hongo is the one who throws it. And he's a cheeky bastard. He basically <laughs> has it um, both tails. Now, I don't know how that would work if Hayato said tails instead of heads. I mean, I think, yeah, I don't know, whatever. But that's not the point. The point is that Hongo won because he was a cheeky bastard. And um, he tries to fight off the ghoster cyborg and goes the cyborg is basically able to withstand like a really high temperature of like 5000 celsius um, for you americans i'm not going to tell you the fahrenheit because you should be cultured but anyway um in terms of that 
Hongo tries to fight off Ghoster and he is not able to. He tries to do a rider kick and he's, he's not able to. So he gets kidnapped and he's being brainwashed. Which actually does work. Um, he does get brainwashed, I will say that. So again, this time I'm going to give um, a decent A effort. Um, but it, gets, uh, it doesn't end up well. Basically what happens is that um, Hongo in an evil state, will try to fight off Hayato, and then Hayato says, huh, you think this is gonna work, mate? Uh, he basically says that his uh, telepathic skills of Doctor Who um, have basically worked against him. Um, okay, <laughs> jokes aside, he basically says that they are some sort of, like, telepathy. Um, I don't know how that works in Cyborgs, but okay. Um, they have some telepathic things on their head and they were able to transmit some messages to be good again i i, I think they just watch doctor who um and <laughs> they, they beat ghoster they save the people and that's the end of the two-parter and we don't see hongo until um the movie no actually we don't know we see him later but i will mention that later obviously but again a really nice two-parter we obviously see that them two you know are doing their own thing and i like especially like the ending of 41 um hongo is like he's on like top of like a house or something and they're all setting off back home and hongo says um in his head he's like um you know i wish i could meet taki and uh toby you know i, I wish i could be with them but i can't because then i would want to remain in japan but I can't because I have to save the world, which is a really nice thing, you know, we see that these characters are not just like, they're not bland, like, they, they do have some motifs, like, they're not just like, go lucky, or I'm gonna save the world, like, they do, like, feel, like, distressed, and they want to save the, the world, like, it wasn't like, they weren't chosen people, technically, they were just used, and then they were like, no, screw that, like, this is not how it's gonna go. If you think about it, like, yeah, Hongo was chosen by Professor Midorikawa, but so could be any other person. You know what I mean? Like, that, that could be, like, of the same value as Hongo, like, fucking Einstein IQ. But, again, it, it's really interesting how, you know, he does care about these people, but he has to sacrifice himself and has to look out uh, for the other countries, which is really nice. I, I definitely do like that. And now I'm going to talk about the first movie. So there are two movies. Um, I'm, I'm going to say movies because um, if any of you have seen um, Lupin, Ranger vs. Pop Ranger and film, um, that's a movie, but it's 30 minutes. Um, now, obviously, there were short movies in the past, but yeah. Um, for most of you Zoomers, uh, a movie is not uh, two hours in the, in this Kamen Rider show. Uh, they're 30 minutes, and the first one is called Kamen Rider vs. Shocker. Um, I know most of you would think that would happen at the end of the show, but no, it's called uh, Kamen Rider vs. Shocker, and it happens between episodes 51 and 52. So, there are two scientists that are conducting some research on the Earth's axes, you know, something about, you know, magnetic stuff, gravity, you, you know what I mean. Now, Dr. Death comes in and he's like, thanks, boys. And they're like, for what? He just comes in um, and he's like, um, yeah, so thank you for giving me all this lovely research. I'm going to definitely use it to take over the world. Definitely not going to use it for, um, you know, saving the world. And um, yeah, they're obviously not digging that idea. Um, one of his one of the colleagues actually gets killed off with the bubble method. Um, again, really cool idea. I definitely like the way that they're being killed off in the show. Um, and the uh, next day, we see that the older man, he basically um, is heading home, I think, or something. I mean, he was kind of calm on, on his journey, I'll be honest. I mean, he just got nearly killed off, and you're kind of calm going back home, I guess. But um, he meets his colleague on his journey, and he's like, where have you been? <laughs> where the fuck have you been, dude? <laughs> um, and uh, he's like, yeah, I've been dead, because I'm not him. <laughs> I'm the monster. <laughs> so uh, he tries to uh, kill him off, uh, but then Taki comes to the rescue, obviously and Hayato comes in and he transforms and 
I can't do it because I'm one handed but you know he transforms and he tries to fight it off but obviously he can't oh the scientist's name is Daidoji um so Daidoji and he has a daughter called Tamami and it's her birthday and we see that Goro is obviously at every um children's uh, birthday party um and he's like happy birthday Tamami now if you think that Goro has a crush on Tamami, then you are very much wrong um, because of the notable scenes that you clearly haven't watched. But, um, yeah, Tamami uh, has a birthday. Um, now, just when everything is going well, um, the whole cake just goes on fire. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was already on fire when <laughs> she was blowing it off, but um, I guess it's work. I guess her wish was um, to do it again. I, I don't know, but the point is that they get attacked. Um, and then Hongo comes in with a actual henshin sequence. So this is actually the first time that we see him transform with like a pose. Um, you know. Gaido Henshin. And Hongo is basically trying to say Tamami from being kidnapped by Salmana Cyborg. So the name of the cyborg is Salmana. Um, now obviously that, you know, it doesn't end up in a good... Um, Mana, haha, uh -huh, I'm so funny. XD uh, Hongo actually um, doesn't save Tamami, and Tamami gets uh, kidnapped. Now, Dr. Death comes in and he's like, um, Hey, so you want your daughter? Okay, well, um, tomorrow morning, um, I'd like you to bring all of your data in exchange for your daughter that we will definitely not give you. And the next morning, uh, the both cameras come in, and I think Tamami is there, but what happens is the big Kamen Rider vs Shocker fight where basically all of the past cyborgs that you have seen so far they come back even calling us all I guess I mean, you know we don't question these things but they come and they, you know they're basically threatening I mean too many cyborgs I mean I couldn't even handle one and yeah I mean we do get introduced to a um, new theme song no, we don't. We actually don't. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So, we do have a really nice fight with Hayato and Hongo, where they fight off the monsters. And, yeah, the movie is really just fighting them off. And, um, I think Salmana, he, um, is actually the only one left to be killed off. And he is actually on the way to da uh, Don Dan Doji's... <laughs> He's actually on his way to Dai Doji's house uh, because the teddy bear that he gave Tamami as her present actually contains the data inside of it. So Salmana was like, I'm getting that. And then Hongo is like, you are not getting that. So, um, yeah, they kill Salmana and that's the end of the movie, actually. Um, yeah, everything goes well. Tamami has a birthday uh, properly. And, uh, yeah, so that's the end of that. Um... In terms of my personal like uh, review of that movie, um, these two movies are definitely like extended episodes of regular Ichigo slash Nigo, um, you know, episodes. So uh, it was it was pretty cool, but the next movie is definitely better. I will definitely say that myself. Uh, but without you know talking too much off topic, um, I'll give it like a six. Uh, again, purely because it's just a normal episode. We just more footage um and fun fact so if um any of you have ever watched like any henshin sequences or whatever on youtube that are definitely not legal um all of the henshin sequences that are most likely um you know they're most likely from this movie so fun fact um, I was going to explain for episode 52, but then I was like, yeah, I don't want this review to be two hours. I mean, it's already going to be two hours, let's be honest, guys. Um, but um, in episode 52, um, we see that Dr. Death, he basically flees um, to South America, and Hayato basically does a Sentai send-off. Hayato basically, you know, does a Sentai send-off to Hongo. He's like, hey, listen, this is your show. Um... And yeah, uh, this is your show, so you, you just need to go. So, uh, and that's the end of the arc. I mean, he doesn't die, Dr. Death, but it is uh, the start of a new arc because Hayato is not in the show. So, we have to, like, start up newly. And, yeah, that, that's really, I mean, there's, there's nothing else to talk about there. So, let's talk about episode 53.